during part six of our series, we will show some of the sights and experiences we had in Twillingate, Fogo Island, and at Rebecca's aunt and uncle's cottage near Lethbridge. It was an easy 260 mile drive from Gross Morn to our provincial park campsite near Twillingate. We had a lovely tree covered spot right next to the water. Once camp was set up, we headed north to Twillingate to check out our surroundings and find a place to eat dinner. We chose Pier 39 restaurant by chance and we were not disappointed. Really anywhere along the North Shore can be a good place for iceberg spotting, but it was late June now and we did not see or hear of any sightings. Here we caught the last bits of daylight on our way back to camp. The next morning was sunny and warm, so we had tea on the beach. You can tell we are not bundled up near as much as in the previous videos. You can even see bare ankles if you look closely. After breakfast, we headed back to Twillingate and checked out some of the hiking trails. The trail system has been expanding in the area. A lot of areas in Newfoundland are boggy and wet, so trails often require boardwalks or a lot of gravel work to be usable. Communities are making big efforts to attract tourists. That includes building or improving hiking trails, as well as having nice places to stay and eat. Most areas usually have at least a couple of boat tour options as well. If you look closely in these boggy areas, you may find Newfoundland and Labrador's provincial flower, the pitcher plant. This species survives off insects that fall into its captivity. The plant lures prey with sweet-smelling nectar that emanates from the rim of the pitcher, found at the base of the plant. Back in town, we both took turns in a lobster trap at the Scott Lewis Pencil Art Studio. We saw many neat old churches on our trip, some abandoned and plenty still alive and well. Next to this church is an old schoolhouse turned boat building museum, and sadly we missed the live demonstration, but still had a nice tour. In the past, boats were a major mode of transportation since there were few roads, but many small outport communities. Boats are being built here the same way they have been for generations. Our time in Twillingate was up, so we boarded yet another ferry. This time we are taking a 50 minute ride to Fogo Island. Fogo is the largest of the offshore islands of Newfoundland and Labrador. Fishing has always been hard life. Before Confederation with Canada, the mercantile classes of St. John's became rich by holding a near monopoly stranglehold on both supply of goods to the outports and on the sale of fish from them. In the 20th century, the Fishermen's Protective Union was formed in an attempt to protect fishermen from this control. It was a form of cooperative with general stores owned by fishermen for fishermen. Today, the Fogo Island Cooperative continues to successfully stake footholds in new fish markets. Crab and lobster fisheries have largely Replace the cod fishery. A fish packing plant remains in operation in the town of Fogo. We were thankful for our beautiful campsite at the Brimstone Head RV Park, which is run by the Brimstone Head Lions Club. A common sight in Fogo and throughout Newfoundland are fishing stages and stores. This is where fishermen would prepare and process their cod catches and store the salted fish. Thank you, Rebecca, for these amazing pictures. Plenty of hiking trails were to be found on Fogo, including Joe Bat's Point Trail, which leads to a statue that commemorates the now extinct Great Auk bird species. Everyone enjoyed their food so much at Bang Belly Cafe, we had to go back a second time. 
Brimstone Head, a prominent rock feature right next to our campground, is considered by the Flat Earth Society as one of the four corners of the earth. Well, we really enjoyed the sunsets. Well, we were back on the ferry and soon to be on the road to Rebecca and Naomi's aunt and uncle's cottage. At the cottage, Naomi and Willa harvested some rhubarb and made us a nice crisp. I had the opportunity to start on my rug hooking kit Rebecca continued her photography practice. And me and Nigo and Rebecca got to stand up paddleboard on the Atlantic Ocean. I was so excited to get to do this. Thank you for everyone who carried our boards down to the water. Lots of special memories have been made at this place. And Matthew and Courtney caught up with us before we left. We hope you'll join us next time when we head to St. John's. Please subscribe if you haven't already Click on the notification bell so that you will be notified when new videos come out. Comment down below if you have been to any of these areas or wish to someday. Thank you.